Why do clothes have to be cotton and not flowy? One of the main reasons why you should have clothes which are comfortable and cotton is so that you can focus on the spell. That's very important. Other than that, uh, it should not be flowy because it can get, you know, your hands can get stuck somewhere. You can get stuck somewhere. You'll have to, you may have to move to collect an extra ingredient uh, that is that you're running short of while you're spell casting. Uh, you may have to shift from one place to another. Depends on the spell. There is never a spell where you're just sitting in one place from start to finish. There's always some kind of movement, right? Even if it comes to snuffing the candle or uh, placing the items together, cotton is uh, breathable. It's a breathable fabric. You are you are comfortable. Um, and uh, because it's uh, the kind of fabric that you cannot use while spell casting. You can spell cast only on satin or uh, you can spell cast on uh, silk, but you can't spell cast on cotton, right? Flowy fabric has a tendency of the energy to become a little zigzag also. There are many schools of thought that believe that the more shiny stuff you wear, the more shiny jewelry you wear, the better it's going to be. It doesn't work like that. The spell looks at your energy and your focus. Having said that, your clothes do matter. But cotton fit, not, you know, fitting in the, to the point of it sticking to your body, but comfortable and not flowy. That's what I would recommend. Isn't jewelry supposed to be chunky to increase vibe? Yes and no. I wear uh, a lot of chunky jewelry and uh, I do believe like pearls, normal pearls don't work on me because of the levels of energy that we release and uh, attract. I use uh, what is called, uh, what is this called? Pearls. These are called Baroque pearls and the reason why I use it is because it helps me trap energy in the body which I can utilize for a spell. But Chunky jewelry does not increase your vibes when it comes to spell casting. The reason being, if it is so chunky that it is that it's coming between your hand and your work. So even if you are wearing chunky jewelry, then it shouldn't make too much of noise. If you wear a couple of bangles, couple of bracelets which are making a lot of noise, a little bit of tinkling is always good, but a lot of noise you'll scatter the energy. And trust me when I say. You don't want to involve yourself with scattered energy because then the whole spell goes haywire. So I would recommend that even if you are interested, if you're going for something light, that's fine. But if you're going for a chunky thing, huge earrings, a huge necklace, maybe a headband or you know a bangle or a bracelet, then uh, make sure that it doesn't affect your spell casting process. Bigger and better doesn't work in this case. Is black a widely used color for a spell caster? I know that a lot of people believe that black is the staple color for spell casting. Everyone across the board uh, prefers black. Earlier, black was used for spell casting, uh, whether it's light or dark, for a very simple reason because if there is any stain or mark that comes on the cloth, then you don't have to take the special effort of trying and getting something new. Cloth wasn't as easily available earlier than it is now. Black is a color that takes in a lot of energy, that sucks in a lot of energy, right? Uh, for a person who is very negative in nature, they are recommended not to wear black. For a person who is uh, going through financial difficulties, never to wear black. So black also has its negative effects. My point, my question to you is why do you want to take a chance when you have so many other colors to pick from? Let me give you some examples and you can go ahead and write it down if you want. If you're going money spells, stick to blues and greens. If you are uh, going, if you are, uh, uh, even whites will do, okay? In combinations are also fine by me. If you are going to do health spells, stick to greens, whites. Uh, or any of the chakra colors follow the colors of the rainbow your seven chakras are the seven colors of the rainbow so violet indigo blue green yellow orange red any of these colors for your health related uh, health spells will do 
For relationship spells, stick to pinks and reds. Then uh, for passion spells, stick to reds. For moon spells, stick to whites and grays or silvers. Right? For luck spells, stick to green and gold. So your color does define the kind of spells that you do. It adds to the process. It gives flavor to the process. But black, I would not recommend um, unless and until you don't really have a choice. But if you do want to wear black, see if you can step it up with a, you know, a bright colored jewelry, some rings or uh, a bracelet, earrings, just to break the, the darkness of the black and put a little bit more flavor and color in it. How do we dress and adorn at Rakaina? With Rakaina, believes in keeping things simple, keeping things real and magic is real. We believe in focusing on the process and not deviating or diverting the energy ball that we have created around the spell. Remember, we do many, many spells at one time. And there are times when we do spells right one after the other, all through midnight and then some. So what we have is we have a special armoire where we've kept all the clothing that we require to wear during a particular spell. And then we add and subtract on it. So if I'm wearing something in white for a purification spell, if I have to do a money spell after that, I'll probably continue wearing the white or I will change it to something else. Similarly, when it comes to a chakra spell, I'll probably wear something in um, blue or green or one of the chakra colors. Depends, especially which kind of chakra am I working on. Um, if it's a spell that has to do with any kind of baggage that has to be released, anything negative, then I'll wear maybe something with a black or white or something with a black with a blue, any other color that adds to it. Uh, the kind of jewelry that we use is all in silver or gold. We used to wear wooden, but then it, it makes a lot of noise. So we tend to avoid it, but we have a separate collection of jewelry that we keep only for spell casting. Are the normal jewelry that we wear um, that you see on me right now, this is all spell casted jewelry, but usually what you're wearing on a daily basis cannot really be used for spell casting. If you like dressing up and if you use uh, artificial uh, ornaments um, and jewelry, then uh, no, you cannot use that. Plastic is absolutely not something uh, that we use in spell casting. One of the main reasons being it's not natural. And the last question is, why keep a separate set of clothes and jewelry for spell casting? That's a very valid question. I see that you've saved the best for the last. The reason why we keep a separate set is because of three reasons. Number one, when you're going to a party, you don't wear the clothes you were wearing at home. You change and you get ready, right? When you're going to bed, you change into your nightdress. When you are doing something like this, you're setting an intention in your mind and your mind is now programmed to do that particular act. Similarly, when you're getting into spell casting, when you don on the outfit, when you wear that particular outfit, when you wear the particular jewelry, your mind is now programmed to do that particular spell. So that's your first reason. Another reason why we keep all this separate is so that there is no mix of energy. When you're spell casting, your focus is at 100%, concentration 100%, and your energy levels are at a very high vibe. When you change into your night dress, and if you're going to wear that for spell casting, you, it's stale, it's a stale garment, it's not fresh. Secondly, you may be a little tired, you may, be, you may have some thoughts, you may be a little restless, anxious, but you may have a low vibe is what I'm saying. And that will come into your spell and that will affect the result of your spell. So that's your second reason to keep and preserve the required amount of focus, balance of energy. You require a separate set of clothing and jewelry. And the third and the last reason is that when we talk about separating what has to be done to separating uh, from your mundane life, from your real life, remember, as a normal occult practitioner, you lead two lives. 
one is that of the occult which is hidden and one is that of your normal routine and you can't possibly have the same clothes for two different activities can you all right now that we are done with all the questions mm -hmm. i you're very welcome uh, i look forward to seeing you all in the next couple of reels i do hope you enjoyed this reel this video um, and if you have any comments you know what to do please leave them in the comment section see you at trakaina and thank you so much for watching Thank you.